Hello, so today I'm going to give you a brief introduction to quantized measure and also talk about some of the experimental and modeling results we've had recently. Okay, so I shall now share my screen. So as I said, an introduction to quantized inertia, I'll show how it passes astronomical tests, how it predicts new thrust. I'll mention obliquely some of the lab tests that are encouraging, but I can't go into detail. And then also speculate about whether we can beat ion drives. Okay, so the main problem that I started with, with was the galaxy rotation problem. So here's a typical galaxy, the Andromeda galaxy and the stars in it spin around. They orbit like this. And if you consider one star here, then it has certain forces on it. It has a gravitational force from all the matter in this, towards the center of the galaxy, which is shown in, in this plot by the black arrow. And this can be calculated, astronomers calculated by adding up all the, the numbers of stars in the galaxy and assuming that each one is like sun. They can also look at the speed of the star in its orbit and calculate the centrifugal force on it. And they found that this is much larger. So the white arrow here is much greater than the black one. So what they do is they add dark matter to the galaxy arbitrarily to boost, uh, to increase the length of this black arrow so it balances the white one. But I don't think this is very scientific because it has to be adjusted to fit every galaxy. So to try and solve this problem, I've I've been thinking about inertial mass for a long time, and I proposed this model for it. So here we have an object accelerating to the right, and according to relativity, it will see a horizon on its left, shown by this vertical line here. So any information from behind this horizon will never catch up to the object which is accelerating away from it. So we also know that horizons tend to produce radiation. This was found by Stephen Hawking for black hole event horizons. And that's because they, horizons tend to split virtual particle pairs. It also happens for horizons of this type, or at least it's theorized to, and the radiation that comes off is called un radiation. So imagine this object is accelerating to the right and it's surrounded by this un radiation. The, the new part in quantized inertia is that, as in the Casimir effect, this virtual radiation is damped between the object and the horizon. So you see there's only one wave here. There are lots of waves on this side. So this means that more radiation is banging into the object from this direction than from this direction, so it gets pushed back against it, its acceleration. And I managed to show in this paper down here, that this looks like inertial mass, which, as you know, opposes whatever acceleration you give an object. But this isn't the entire story. There's also uh, there's also a cosmic horizon shown here by the, the line on the right. And if accelerations become very low, then other waves become very long. For example, like this one, and then they start being damped by the cosmic horizon as well, and that damps them all the way around the object symmetrically. So that means there's less of an imbalance between the right and left sides of the object, and this inertial mechanism uh, collapses. So I, I, predict, uh, I published this part of the theory in 2007. Okay, but it turns out that this is exactly what you need to model galaxies without dark matter, because stars at the edge of galaxies have very low acceleration. So this means, according to this new theory, that their inertial mass decreases, and so does their centrifugal, the centrifugal force on them. So that means that this white arrow here reduces in length till it's about the same size as the black one. And it turns out the quantized inertia predicts galaxies exactly without the need for dark matter. And I, I've shown that in several papers, including this one here. Okay. So if this 
does mean that we understand inertia for the first time, then that means we can control it. So as a suggestion, consider that you have an acceleration core, a fast spinning object here. And if you spin things very fast, the under waves become very short. It may be possible to spin something fast enough that the waves are short enough to be damped by a metal plate that I've, I've called here a damper, some kind of matter which inter interacts with them. If you can do that, then the amount of virtual radiation approaching from this side is large, but there's none above, so that the object goes upwards. So would this be an alternative to the usual method we have of launching things, where we, we fire things down at a very fast speed and the object moves up to conserve momentum? This kind of propulsion would not need fuel. Okay. So something like this has been seen before, and I've alluded to it already, the Casimir effect. If you have two parallel plates very close together, there are lots of virtual particles outside, but those inside are damped, so there's a force inwards on them. You can adjust this slightly by having V-shaped plates. Now you've got the radiation outside, less inside, so the force is in the direction of these red arrows and this arrow to the right. Now imagine that you could somehow energize the quantum field inside the object like this. Well, now the force would be outwards and leftwards. So the object would tend to move towards narrow, its narrow end. Okay. So a few years ago, I received DARPA funding uh, to, to test this in, in the lab. So the project title was called Propellantless Proportion from Quantized Inertia. And I set up several teams. So there's a team, a theoretical team at Plymouth, composed of me and my postdoc, Jesus Lucio. I, I hired a postdoc with the, uh, the funding. Then there's an experimental team in Dresden, Germany, led by Professor Timar, shown here, and one in Spain, in Madrid, the University of Alcala, led by Professor Perez Diaz and his team. Okay. So in Plymouth, we've been developing a model, and I'm going to focus on, on that now because I can allude to the experiments using this model. So it looks like this on the screen. It's called Morph, Morph. <clears throat> that Model of Reactionless Proportion by Horizons. And you can input certain things. On the right, you can draw a cavity, whatever cavity shape you want. Here, you input laser power, which is uh, 0.35 watts in this case. The laser wavelength, one micron in this case, and the material of the cavity, which is copper in this case. And then the, the software will predict the thrust that quantized inertia predicts for this cavity, given that you're inputting a laser and the laser light is bouncing around inside, energizing the vacuum. So as I already predicted, the cavity should move towards its narrow end. And indeed it does. You can see the thrust is minus 0 0.08 micron, micronewton, which gives you a thrust to power ratio of about 0 0.0002 newtons per kilowatt. So this is very similar to the test done by Martin Timer, and it agrees pretty well with the results he saw, which I must emphasize are not conclusive yet, but he saw 140 plus or minus 30 nanonewtons of thrust. Okay. So the great thing about having a model is you can predict how you might enhance things. So if we change, for example, the material to silver, then that boosts the thrust by about a factor of 10. So we now get 0.002 newtons per kilowatt. And if I tell you that iron drives are 0 0.02 newtons per kilowatt, it means we need about a, another factor of 10 to compete with them. So we've tried playing with a few different shapes and this turns out to be a very good one. We call this the Bart drive because it looks a bit like Bart Simpson's head. So we have a zigzag shape on this side and a flat shape on the other side. We fire the laser and it bounces around. And this shape produces a, an improvement of about a factor of six in thrust. So now we're about 0 0.01 newtons per kilowatt, which is getting close to iron drives. 
The great thing about this method of propulsion is that you don't require fuel. Ion drives require fuel so that eventually they run out of fuel and they fall out of the sky. Satellite using them will fall out of the sky. With this, you just need a satellite with a solar panel to produce energy for the laser. Okay. So to conclude, quantized inertia explains inertial mass for the first time and it gets rid of dark matter. And it predicts propellantless thrust, which would be very useful. Um, the lab tests that have been done so far are encouraging. And the model we have suggests that we can, we can beat ion drives without, without the need for fuel. For obvious reasons, because it's propellantless, quantized inertia means that you could have interstellar travel. Normally to reach a, a, the nearest star, in a human lifetime, you would need an incredible amount of fuel. But with this, you could accelerate without fuel, just with electricity, energy. And it also may be possible eventually to make this thrust large enough to, to launch. There are some possibilities in that direction as well. So thank you for listening and please subscribe to my channel. Goodbye, till next time.